Growing up and learning to surf in Naples on Florida's southwest Gulf Coast in the 1970s was fun, but also vastly different from what I'd experienced going over to the East Coast. The waves were much more consistent over there, so I'd work all week and then take a road trip on the weekends. Cocoa Beach was the hot spot with lots of different beaches with great waves, plenty of surf shops to stock up on clothes and equipment, and just enough nightlife to have a really good time. Just a short drive south of Cocoa Beach is Sebastian Inlet, which was one of the most consistent spots in Florida before a Corps of Army Engineers made some alterations to the jetty, which changed the way the waves break, and not in a good way. Back then, it was almost a sure bet that the inlet would have some rideable waves, so we'd pack up the car in Naples and make the three and a half hour drive for a weekend of fun and surf. The problem was that everyone else had the same idea and Sebastian Inlet would become ground zero for anyone that wanted to surf. It was a high performance wave attracting the best surfers from all over. The waves broke in very specific locations and the best waves were over by the jetty and that was known as first peak. There was a pecking order with the best surfers getting the best waves while the rest of us scrambled for the leftovers. Just to the north was second peak that sometimes had a left on it and that's where I'd like to surf. It was also a great spot to see all the action going on over at first peak. Sebastian Inlet was definitely the spot in the 70s, 80s, and 90s. Super fun waves out in the water and lots of distractions on the beach. It was always worth the drive. Here's a look at Florida's Sebastian Inlet on a particularly busy weekend back in 1988.
As a photographer, the beach was a prime place to find potential models, and there were definitely a few in the crowd on this day. One of my favorite spots to photograph a bikini model was just up the beach near another surf break called Spanish House. On days when the waves were flat, the models and I would practically have the beach all to ourselves with the exception of a fisherman or two. I'd bring the model to the spot and we would use everything from the dune line to the water and all the sand in between for pictures. The beach was my favorite place to be and photographing beautiful models and swimwear was truly living the dream. I once did a photo shoot with Gianna Amore at this spot, and we got some really nice pictures as we worked the beach over. I ran out of film before we ran out of sunlight, so I asked Gianna if we could go down to the inlet so I could catch a few waves before dark. I always carry my board when I'm down that way, just in case the opportunity presents itself, and this time it paid off. It cost me dinner with Gianna afterwards, but I'm not complaining. We got the pictures we wanted, I got to surf. She got to eat, and believe me when I say that girl cleans up real nice, if you catch my drift. It was a win-win situation, and the end to another perfect day, thanks to my favorite place, the beach. <laughs>
machst es. You know why Sebastian Lent was the top surf spot in Florida before they altered the jetty in the early 2000s, which all but ruined First Peak. In its prime, the inlet was legendary. I should say the weekend in this video was extra special because the NKF surf contest was being held there that weekend, which drew a bigger crowd on the beach than usual. The action in the water was about the same as any other day with waves because it's, it's always a competition out there. I'll edit another video that's focused on the NKF competition, which had a wild final heat with Matt Keckley against Richie Collins in a classic Florida versus California battle for the trophy. They had a bikini contest before the awards were handed out. And I'll include that in the video as well, so stay tuned. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this story from One Photographer's Life.